So now I have my dialogue edited and timed out. For those who have a music track, um, you don't need to do so much editing, but this also gives you the chance to edit your music track as well. Maybe you wanna to splice together two different music tracks, whatever, uh, you, you'll use the same tools. Okay, at this point though, let's start cutting in the panels. Um, and so generally, um, especially if your film is dialogue driven or music driven, you do want to edit to that audio. Um, your sound effects, you would add them in after you've cut in your, your visual, your, okay. your panel. And just make sure you created a sequence for audio for your voice tracks and then a sequence for your, what, how, how come you have three sequences? Yeah, that's a good point. And I should clarify, I did this um, just for the, the sake of demonstration. Um, so you don't have to sit here and watch me edit dialogue. I can just skip ahead in the process. Um, we you, typically, when we do it, we'll just have one sequence, right? I think typically you can do it, you can build it all in the same sequence. Um, but I do want you to be aware, um, you have the ability to also duplicate these sequences. If you right click, go up to duplicate. Say you want to try out different things and, and it's just easier to duplicate and just make two versions instead of undoing a bunch of steps. You know, So there, there is a time when, when you will want to intentionally duplicate your sequence, but for what I'm showing you right now, this is just for the sake of demonstration that I have them split out. That's a good question. Um, so again, for the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna cut in the storyboard panels. So I've already imported them, but what I should have shown you is that there are some settings that you should be aware of, probably don't need to address, but just so you're aware, um, that affect um, the importing of still images. So if I select on this, um, see, it shows me the description. Um, and so let me just show you, if you go up to Premiere Pro menu, preferences, um, go down to the timeline preferences. Here, still image default duration. It's by default set to five seconds. And, you know, if you're cutting storyboards together, that's that's neither here or there, you know, it depends on what you're cutting, right? But just so you know, you you can change this. Um, just so you know, we'll leave it at five seconds. But again, just so you know, that could come in handy. So right now I've imported my storyboards. They're each five seconds long. I can immediately, I can double click on it, send it to the source window. I can immediately drag it to my timeline and you'll see that the duration is five seconds. Exactly. I'm going to hit plus on the keyboard to zoom in. Right. So that's at five seconds. So again, the point of making an animatic is to specifically time out the duration of each panel. Um, and so there's different ways that you can do that. Here's the manual way, as I was saying. So because my film is, is audio driven, I'm going to play the audio. And in my head, I'm going to make decisions about which panel I'm showing. So let me play back. Ugh, this guy is the worst. Looks all right to me. I grew up with him. Trust me, he's the worst. Okay, so I wanted to start on a close-up where you don't know who's talking. So after we hear the two different voices, then I want to cut to a wide. So at this point, I want to cut to a wide. And then you'll see as soon as I hover on my storyboard panel, I get this red bracket with an arrow. And this allows me to click and drag and just automatically um, affect the duration of this still image. And then I can bring in my second panel right there. And so I cut wide. Here are the different tools. Um, and you'll notice, so this red one is like the, the default tool. Um, we've got some other ones. We've got this one that lets you select um, all the trip, all the clips um, after a certain period of time. So you see that it, I selected it here and it shows everything behind it, which then lets me easily move things around if I had to do that. Um, let me undo that. If you hold here, then you see there's an option where you can do the reverse, select everything ahead of it, move that around if 
speed. And you see that it's selecting my video panel, my video track too. That's because this is enabled and this is turned on. If I deselected that, oops, let me, yep. And then try that again. Oh, okay. Um, that didn't really affect things. I'm thinking of Avid in another editing program where that would actually affect it. You would have to lock it down um, if you didn't want to move the video track. Um, we have, here are your different editing tools. And so again, note the hotkeys associated with it. Um, the ripple effect tool is yellow. And if I use it, click and drag, you'll see it pushes everything along with it. So this is akin to the insert edit, meaning you, you change something at a point in time and it just pushes everything to make room for the change. If I do, and that's represented by a yellow arrow, this rolling edit is this double arrow icon. Um, this I use a lot in animatic editing because it lets me fine tune the, the edit point without moving or shifting anything else around it. So this is like an internal edit. So it's like, no, nah, actually I wanna cut wide during Cactus's line. Then I can just click and drag. And so that rolling edit is just easier than um, Taking the arrow key, physically moving things around. Again, there's many ways to do things, but you'll you'll see that certain tools are just going to be faster. Here's the blade tool. That means I physically make a cut, and then I can physically drag it, or physically roll the edit. Um, however, however I need. So the blade can also be useful um, once you have everything in your timeline and you realize you might need to shift some things around, split something up, you'll use the blade tool. Um, slip tool is pretty great, but it's a little hard to demonstrate with still images. What this does is if you had a video track um, and I can show you with an audio clip, you know, if you had something that you only edited a tiny bit of, Remember here, if I double click this, this shows me my source view and it shows me just Hit your thumb with a hammer. He's the subhuman equivalent. Right? Like here's my in and out point from the original track. So the slip tool lets me just slide, slide this track around while keeping the duration, while keeping the in and out point at the same length, but I can slide what's underneath, what's inside that track. Um, so if I slide it over, plus relationship wise, I was it'll about... actually move to a different part of the original source. <laughs> so you can imagine this is helpful if you're working with video footage and you have your edits, <laughs> if you're editing to a beat or a track, right? You want the edit to happen at a certain time, but you might want to shift the content of that clip. So you use the slip tool. Pen tool is great for um, actually for adjusting volume. If you click and drag and elongate the view of your audio tracks, you get this little line. I'm going to hit plus sign to zoom in. You get this line that shows up. This actually denotes your volume. So you can create um, a little bit of quick and dirty sound mixing just by creating points with your pen tool and moving the volume up or down. Trust me, he's the worst. Um, so you can just sort of manually um, do some audio mixing. The video layer has its own uh, corresponding use for the pen tool, but I'll, I'll show you that in another way. Um, hand is, is just great for navigating around. Um, and then your type tool, I will show you in a second when we make the scene numbers. So manually, you would just go through your storyboards, cut them in. If I double click, um, if I double click them into the source window, then I can just use my overwrite edit 
hotkey, which is the period, and just cut that in. Now I do need to make sure I have the track enabled, and then I can cut it in, match it with the sound. He's the worst. So I've got that acted out here. So double click, hit period, overwrite, edit, right? Because otherwise I will, if I do an insert edit, it will move all of my audio clips out of timing. So I'm gonna do an overwrite edit. Um, Thumb with a hammer. He's the subhuman equivalent. Also once he- All right, and then he says also. So he changes his tone and I have a different board panel for that. So I can go one panel at a time, just line them up, time them out individually. Or sometimes, depending, you might want to select all of them, or maybe just a sequence that you know that there's a lot of quick cuts. Select and drag this, and you see it will automatically drag them in at five seconds long each. And then I can lay them in sequence and then maybe use some of these other tools. Um, so the, the rolling edit tool or the ripple edit tool. Um, I, you just want to be careful that you don't mess up the timing of the audio. So B is that um, rolling edit tool. Um, no, they call it something else. Ripple edit, sorry. That's this yellow one. So that'll shift my audio too. So just, just you'll, you'll develop um, sort of your preference. You'll see that this red one doesn't work because there's things blocking it. So then you might need to use the yellow one, but, but then it's considering the audio tracks. So I'm gonna lock these tracks down and then I can use the audio I mean, the, the yellow one, like this. I might use that. Here's the rolling edit one and just like fine tune this cut here. Um, so yeah, I've been showing you kind of a, a manual way to drag in your, your storyboards, but there's, there's another option that I wanna cover. So I showed you these different views in your project window. Also, if you double click on a folder, it's called a bin, which, which is a terminology from the old days of editing on actual film strips and, and being in an editing room where you had these literal bins, like a, like a trash can that you would hang your film strips, your physical film strips, you would hang it over this bin. So that's where the name comes from, but we think of it as more like a folder these days. If you double click on any folder or double click on any bin, it will open up in its own panel. And then you can change the view, the icon view. And this is a nice visualization of all of your panels. And then if you go to this one where it says freeform view, you can actually rearrange uh, your boards visually. And you can kind of try things out before you cut them in. So this, this could be helpful um part of your process also as a note anytime you are selected on a panel and you hit um the the tilde button on the keyboard which is underneath the escape button upper left corner on a mac keyboard every time you hit that it temporarily moves that panel and it enlarges it to your whole window view so you don't have to keep like scrolling things around and then you can just hit, hit the the tilde button again to to bring it back so that's just very easy to see again if you are in this view called freeform view you can rearrange your your sequences and test things out before you cut them into your timeline so that's handy and then um, icon view gives you a thumbnail version of, of the whole sequence so here is what's an, a really um, helpful and new tool that they've added to Premiere Pro and it, and it can be used for cutting animatics, which is really great. There's a link to this six minute tutorial on how to, on how to do this, but I will show you the basics right now. 
So this is especially helpful if you are editing to an audio track, especially if you're editing to music and you, you are trying to follow a beat. What you're gonna do is you're gonna create markers in your timeline and then tell Premiere to place your storyboard panels according to the markers that you made in your timelines. Crazy. Um, so I'll just briefly demonstrate with my dialogue. So I'm gonna play and then while I'm playing and as I hear where I wanna make a cut, I'm gonna hit M on the keyboard and M will create a marker. M, you see up here, this green thing. Um, and these markers will tell Premiere where I want my storyboard panels. I'm gonna undo that. The thing to notice about the markers though, is that I wanna make sure I am not selected on any track um, because if I was accidentally selected um, on a clip and I hit M, you will see, if I zoom in, it made a marker on the clip instead of on, in my timeline. So make sure you are deselected on everything before you hit M for marker. Okay, so I'm gonna to listen to my track and in real time, as it's playing back, I'm gonna hit M for everywhere I wanna make a cut. So playing back. Ugh. Actually, I'm gonna start at the very beginning. So M uh, at the beginning and then hit play. Ugh. This guy is the worst. Looks all right to me. I grew up with him. Trust me, he's the worst. You know that feeling when you hit your thumb with a hammer? He's the subhuman equivalent. Also, once he hit me with a hammer. You're really jealous. Of him? Why? Because he's worth a thousand dollars? That, then this picture makes him look manly enough to be on a tonic bottle. Eh. A virility tonic bottle. Just look at his mustache. He's... Okay, so you've seen that I've, I've made quite a few cuts. And again, that's because I know this is the style that, and the direction of my film. It's, it's very fast paced, it's very dialogue driven, and I've, I've created a lot of storyboard panels you know, for each sort of like comedic beat within the dialogue. So I, I have a bunch timed out. And what this is gonna do is it's just going to be a rough estimation of where to place all the panels. So if I'm in this icon view, I want to make sure my panels are are numbered and are numbered in order um, because Premiere Pro is only going to, to care about that. So if I select, can I select? Select, come back out of this view, hit the fill day button, and then drag all of this to this little icon here where it says automate to sequence. Bring that over. And then I want it to placement to be at the unnumbered markers. And selection order, I'm actually a little nervous that I didn't select it in the order um, that I want it to. So let me cancel that and let me just be positive that I selected it in numerical order. I'm gonna try it again from one all the way, hold shift and click to 38. Bring that over. Okay, selection order at unnumbered markers. Um, and yeah, we want it to be an overwrite edit because I want it to land on top of the audio that's already there. So hit okay. And then um, you'll see that I have more panels than I had markers for, but up till this point, You'll see that it roughly it, it placed the, the panels at the timing that I set it. So now at this point, I'll go back and play, play it back, and then I'll make my fine tune adjustments with the rolling edit tool. Up with him. Trust me, he's the worst. You know that feeling when you Okay, so this is a little early, right? So he, he uses this hand pose for when he says, you know that feeling. You know that feeling when you hit your thumb with a hammer? He's the subhuman equivalent. Also, once he hit me with a hammer. You're really jealous of him. Okay, so that was a little early. So, you know, so you, you kind of get the idea. Um, and so that automate to sequence is very useful. Um, it's a little tough to, in my opinion, animating to so, something that's so dialogue heavy, um, just because I will have to make a lot of fine tuning adjustments. I would prefer to do it manually as I go. Um, that's just me though. But I think if you are animating to something, wait, wait, 
um, if you're animating to music or, or something, I think this animate to automate to sequence function is, is a really great uh, rough draft of timing out your panels. Um, and then just a quick note on markers. If you double click one of these guys, it lets you go in, it lets you label it. Um, you can leave a comment on there um, and you can navigate to the next one or previous one. Just so you know, the, this is a tool that you may need someday, maybe probably not for this film. Cancel all that. And then also if you right click up here, you have a few uh, navigation options here, especially clear, clear all markers because <laughs> it gets cluttered.